my name is Nilesh Patel. I'm an emergency physician. I work for Simex, and today we're going to be going through an ATLS scenario. And as you can see, it takes place in an ambulance. So it's a small environment, but it has a lot of tools. So I'll show you some of those in just a moment. Um, as you can see, there's a patient here laying on the cot. And then we also have um, a, a non-player character. So basically a computer character that's controlled by the moderator. And she'll be able to help us with certain aspects of this case. So if you're moderating this case and having a student go through it for the first time, it's probably helpful to give them a few moments to orient themselves to the ambulance. I'll do that quickly now. So here in the cubbies by the patient's feet, there's some vitals equipment as well as some tourniquets. Along this back wall, you'll see a stethoscope, our C collar, and then in these cubbies over here are some PPE as well as oxygen supplies. As we move towards the back, you'll see our monitor here on the left wall with suction and airway equipment there, an oxygen tank, an ultrasound machine, and then here we have a medication cabinet. Here we also have a series of drawers that have different supplies in it, such as IV tools and saline, an intubation kit, a crite kit, glucose testing and thermometer and pen light, and then finally at the bottom, uh, equipment for a nebulizer. And then there's one more drawer over here on the right hand side that has some scissors and some hemorrhage control supplies. Okay, so with that orientation done, let's get started with the case. Okay, hey sir, I'm Dr. Patel, what's going on? What happened? I don't know, I was just driving. I went through an intersection and saw this other car out of the corner of my eye. Then it hit me. Okay, so in my mind I'm going through ABC, so I'm assessing his airway right now and his speech is clear, so I know his airway is patent. I'm just going to ask him a couple questions right now. Um, are you having any pain at the moment? My chest hurts and my leg hurts. Okay. Can't you give me something for the pain? Yeah, absolutely. I'll get you some pain medicine here in just a moment. Let me listen to your lungs, though, because you mentioned that your chest is hurting. So I'm going to start by putting some vitals okay. equipment on him, just so we can get a sense of his saturations, blood pressure, and pulse. And then let's expose his chest area so we can get a good look and then a listen as well. So I'm going to grab the scissors and cut the shirt off. And I don't see any obvious chest wall injury, but I do want to take a listen as well. So I'm going to grab the stethoscope and I'm going to listen. Good, I'm hearing good breath sounds on the right side, but I'm not hearing anything on the left, so this is concerning for a pneumothorax. It's I also a little see that hard to breathe. Well. Okay, so he's complaining of difficulty breathing, so that matches as well. So let me get him some oxygen. Here we have a nasal cannula. I'm going to connect that up and turn that on. And then we're going to need to decompress his chest. Before I do that though, let me highlight that we do have ultrasound available. So for those practitioners that are comfortable with ultrasound, they can do an ultrasound here and take a quick look. Here on the right side, um, now I'm looking at his lung, we can see that he has lung sliding. This confirms that his right lung is healthy and moving appropriately. However, here on the left side, we are not seeing lung sliding, so this confirms our clinical diagnosis of a pneumothorax. I'm going to give him some medicine for pain, and then we'll decompress that pneumothorax. Let's put an IV in him. I'm going to grab Chlorapep, cleanse his arm, and we'll put the IV in. Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit of pain medicine here. You have a collapsed lung, so we need to uh, take care of that by placing a needle into your chest. That can be painful, so I'm going to give you some pain medicine first. Okay. Uh, I'm thanks. A little bit of ketamine here. I'm going to dispose of the needle. And now I'll give him that pain medicine, which will help. Okay. So now that he has the pain medicine on board, let's work on doing our needle decompression. Oops, wrong kit here. There we go. So here is our 14 gauge needle. I've exposed the chest, so now I can see the appropriate landmarks. I'm going to place this. Oh! 
Okay, so still had a little bit of pain, but let's see if this worked. So I'm going to listen to his good side first. Okay, now let's hear breath sounds. Perfect. Yeah, so we do hear breath sounds, so that confirmed that the needle decompression was effective. Okay, now he was complaining earlier about pain in his leg, so let's take a look at that. What I'm going to do is grab the shears. I'm going to cut off his clothing here. Okay. So now with the clothing removed, we can see that he's got a pretty bad wound to his leg. Let's try placing a dressing on that. So I grab some rolled gauze, and I put that on his wound. Okay. So initially it looked good, but now we can see that he's got a pretty good amount of bleeding there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this gauze, and we're going to need to place a tourniquet. Actually, let's look at the wound a little bit better first. I'm going to have, have my assistant stabilize the C-spine. Can you go ahead and stabilize C-spine so we can roll the patient? I will immobilize the C-spine. Okay. And we can see his vital signs are not looking very good right now, so we're okay. going to need to take care of we this Okay, we can roll on your quickly. count. All right, let's roll on three. One, two, three. We can roll back on your count. Okay. So I can see the wound now. We're going to place the tourniquet, and it looks like the bleeding has stopped. Okay, while you're in that position, I'm going to quickly put some gauze on it. Okay, and I think we're going to be good to roll back. Okay, let's roll back on three. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. And you no longer have to stabilize C-spine. Stopping C-spine immobilization. Okay, so let's review our vital signs right now. So the patient has improved, his heart rate's better, oxygen's now 100%, blood pressure's looking pretty good. One additional thing I'd like to do is just start some fluids. So I'm going to grab our saline, I'm going to spike the bag, hang it here, and then grab that tubing and attach it to his IV. Okay, so now I'm going to call the uh, emergency department, uh, that way I can radio report. So I'm going to grab our radio, Okay, this is Medic Hi, 15, this is Martha, the ED charge nurse at Simex General. How can I help you? Great, this is Medic 15. I'm calling in a trauma alert. I have a 40-year-old male who is involved in a motor vehicle accident. Um, he presented today with chest pain as well as right leg pain. And on evaluation, he was found to have a left-sided pneumothorax, for which we placed a needle decompression, and a right-sided hemorrhage um, on the posterior of his right leg. Um, it did look like arterial bleeding, so a tourniquet has been placed, and we have now achieved hemostasis. Um, in addition to the needle decompression and tourniquet, we gave him a liter of fluids as well as some ketamine for pain control. And his vital signs currently are heart rate of 91, O2, 100%, and that's on 15 liters. His respirators are 19, and his blood pressure is 120 over 79. Um, any further questions? What's your ETA? So ETA will be about 10 minutes. Okay, we'll have a room ready for you on arrival. Great, thank you. Thanks, bye. Okay, so that's a quick overview of this case. As you can see, it's a small environment, and it doesn't take a lot of time, but it covers a lot of essential learning points um, for uh, providers learning to assess a patient that's had pretty significant trauma.